In this video, we'll be looking at another application of quadratic functions. We'll be looking at maximizing areas of rectangular regions when we are given certain conditions on the perimeter. We'll be looking at a couple of examples to get a sense of how this works. So in our example here, we have 200 feet of fencing and we want to enclose a rectangular region in our yard. Because we're working with a rectangular region, let's draw ourselves a little rectangle here. Now in part A of our problem, we want to express the area of our region in terms of the width. So let's label some of our variables on our picture. We have capital A for area, we have W for the width, and one last quantity that might be relevant here would be the length of this rectangular region. Let's call that L, L for length. Now in general, we know that to find the area of a rectangle, we have the relationship that area is equal to length times width. So in terms of our variables, we have the equation A is equal to L times W. At the moment, our area is dependent on two different variables. It's dependent on L and W. Our goal in part A of this problem is to write our area just in terms of W. So we don't want the L there in my equation. This is very similar to our previous video when we were working with revenues. We saw that the revenue is equal to quantity sold times price. It's dependent on two variables, Q and P. We were able to use the demand equation to make a substitution to get rid of the Q. So in this example, we need to come up with an equation that relates my L and W. That way we can make a substitution to get rid of the L. There's a bit of information that's given in our problem that will help us figure out this relationship. We're told that we have 200 feet of fencing. And so when we enclose our area, we only have 200 feet of fencing to work with. So this is a condition imposed on the perimeter of our rectangle. So what is the perimeter of our rectangle? We have two sides of W for the top and the bottom, and we have two sides of L for the left and the right sides. So the perimeter of our rectangle would be 2 times W plus 2 times L, and since we have 200 feet of fencing, our perimeter should add up to 200. Now what we can do with this equation is we can solve for L, that way, we can make a substitution in our area equation to get rid of that L. So if I want to solve for L, we might start by subtracting 2W from both sides. This gives me 2 times L equals negative 2W plus 200. And then divide both sides by 2. We end up with L equals negative W plus 100. Now that we have L in terms of W, we can make a substitution. Replacing this L in my area equation with negative W plus 100, we get area is equal to negative W plus 100 times W. Let's simplify this a little bit by distributing the W inside the parentheses. So this gives us area equals negative W squared plus 100 W. So we are able to rewrite our area just in terms of the width W. Let's take a moment to look at the graph of this equation. Normally when we graph equations, we have equations of the form y equals something involving x's. And that's why when we graph it, we have an x and y axis. But here our equation is written in terms of a equals something involving w's. The w's here are taking the place of the x's. So instead of having an x axis, we have a w axis, which tells us about the width. And our a here is taking the place of the y. So instead of having a y axis, we have an a axis, which tells us about the area. Now, because the right hand side here is a quadratic, we know that the shape of this equation is a parabola. Specifically, we notice that there's a negative in front of the w squared, which tells me that there is a vertical reflection. So the shape of our graph is an upside down parabola, so it might look something like this.
Now, for any point that's on this graph, let's call this point A comma B, the first coordinate here tells me about the width, and then the second coordinate would tell me the corresponding area. If we look at part B and C of this problem, we're asking what are the dimensions that maximize the area and what is the maximum area? Since the vertical axis tells us about the area, what we want to do is we want to find the highest point on our graph because that will give me the point that has the largest area. And that point would be the vertex of our parabola. So if we can find the vertex, we'll be able to answer parts B and C of our problem. Now, in order to find the vertex, what we'll need to do is write our area equation in standard form. Remember, our first step here is to factor the number in front of the w squared. So factor out a negative 1. To find out what's remaining, we want to take each term here and divide by the number we pulled out. So negative w squared divide by negative 1, that gives me positive w squared. And 100w divided by negative 1 gives me negative 100w. Our next step is to complete the square. So let's copy down what we have. a equals negative 1 times w squared minus 100w. Leave yourself some space before we close the parentheses. Now, to complete the square, we want to take the negative 100 here. We want to divide that by 2 and square the result. Negative 100 divided by 2 gives us negative 50. And if we take negative 50 and we square it, we get 2,500. So we need to add 2,500 here. But we can't just add this number because that will change our equation to balance things out. We also need to subtract by 2,500. By adding 2,500, though, we'll be able to factor this blue part as a square. Now, remember, if we want to factor after completing the square, remember this factors as your variable with half of the middle number all squared. So our equation is going to look like a equals negative 1 times w minus 50 squared, and then we still have the minus 2,500 at the end. One last step here is to distribute the negative 1 to each of our terms inside the parentheses. So we end up with a equals negative 1 times w minus 50 squared and then plus 2500. Now our quadratic is in standard form and we can easily read off what the vertex is. The first coordinate of the vertex is the number that's with your variable inside the square except you flip the sign. So since there's a negative 50 here, our first coordinate is positive 50, and then our second coordinate is the number at the end. That's going to be 2,500. And remember, for points on the graph here, the first coordinate tells me about the width, the second coordinate tells me about the area. So the 50 would be the width, and the 2,500 would be the area. So we now have some answers to our questions. We know that when the width is 50 feet, that's when we'll have the maximum area of 2,500 square feet. Now in part B, we're asked for the dimensions of our rectangular region. We just have the width, we also need to figure out the length. In order to find the corresponding length, we're going to use this relationship that we found earlier. We know that the length is equal to negative of the width plus 100. So in this case, substituting 50 in for w, we have length equals negative 50 plus 100, which gives us 50. So to answer part b of our problem, the length of our rectangular region is going to be 50 feet, and the width of our rectangular region is also going to be 50 feet. So it turns out that when we want to maximize the area here, our region is not only a rectangle, but it's actually a square. Now, for part C of our problem, we want to find the maximum area. This we found already when we looked at the second corner of the vertex. The maximum area is 2,500 square feet. And that completes our problem. You might notice that what we did here is very similar to our revenue problems. We started off with our area depending on two variables, L and W. By making a substitution, we can rewrite the area just in terms of W. 
And when we do that, it turns out that the area is a quadratic function. We can then maximize this quadratic by figuring out where that vertex is. So let's take a look at another example. In this example, a farmer wants to enclose a rectangular region that borders a river. This time, there is 1,000 feet of fencing available, and we have a diagram of how we want to enclose the region right here. We see that there's a river on the north side, so there's no need for fencing on that north side. However, there's going to be three sides of fencing that we'll need. In part A of this problem, we want to express the area in terms of the width. Let's go to our diagram and let's label some of our quantities. We have A for the area, we have W for the width, and lastly, let's use L for the length of our rectangular region. So to begin, to express the area, we know that the area of a rectangular region is the length times the width. In terms of our variable, we have the equation A is equal to L times W. Right now, we see that the area is written in terms of two variables, L and W, but we only want to write it just in terms of W. So we need to somehow make a substitution to get rid of that L. We're going to use the 1,000 feet of fencing to help us get a relationship between L and W. Let's think about how we would express the amount of fencing we'll need. Remember, we want to enclose the left side, the bottom side, and the right side. Summing up those sides, we have one W, but two Ls, one for the left and one for the right. So one W plus two L is the amount of fencing that we'll use, and that should equal the 1,000 feet of fencing that's available. Now, if we take this equation and we solve for L, we'll be able to make a substitution in our area equation. So to solve for L, we'll start by subtracting W from both sides. We get 2L equals negative W plus 1,000, and then divide both sides by 2. We end up with L is equal to negative 1 half W plus 500. So now that we have L in terms of W, we can make a substitution. We want to replace the L in my area equation with negative 1 half W plus 500. So our area is equal to negative 1 half W plus 500 times W. And we can simplify this by distributing the W to each of the terms inside the parentheses. This gives us area equals negative 1 half W squared plus 500 W. Now, if we were to graph this equation, we would get something that looks like this. Instead of having an x and y axis, we have a w and a axis because in our equation, the a is taking the place of the y and the w's are taking the place of the x's. The shape of our graph is an upside down parabola because our a here is a quadratic since we have that w squared on the right hand side. And it's upside down because the number in front of the w squared is negative, which means that there is a vertical reflection involved. Now, if we want to find the maximum area for our rectangular region, we need to find the highest point of our graph, since our vertical axis tells us about the area. And that highest point would be the vertex. So let's find the vertex of this quadratic to help us answer parts b and c of our problem. In order to find the vertex, we need to write our quadratic in standard form. So start by factoring out the negative one half. When we pull out the negative one half, what's left? Well, we want to take each term here and divide by negative one half. We have negative one half w squared. If I divide that by negative one half, we get w squared. And taking 500 w and dividing that by negative one half, we get minus 1000 w. Our next step is to complete the square. So we have a equals negative 1 half times w squared minus 1000 w, and we'll leave ourselves some space before we close the parentheses. Now to complete the square, we want to take the negative 1000 here, we want to divide that by 2 and square the result. 
negative 1,000 divided by 2 would be negative 500. And negative 500 squared gives us 250,000. We can't just add 250,000 because that would change our equation. So we also need to balance things out and subtract by 250,000. Now that we've added the 250,000, we can factor this blue portion here. Remember that when we factor after completing the square, it's always your variable with half of this middle number all squared. So our area is equal to negative 1 half times w minus 500 squared and then minus 250,000. Our last step is to distribute that negative one half to each term inside the parentheses. That's going to give me A equals negative one half times W minus 500 squared and then plus 125,000. So this is the formula for our quadratic in standard form. And since it's in standard form, we can easily identify the vertex. The first coordinate of the vertex is the number that's with your variable inside the square, except with its sign flipped. So we have a negative 500 here, which means that our first coordinate is positive 500. And then our second coordinate for the vertex is the number at the end. So our second coordinate is 125,000. And remember that our first coordinate is telling me about the width and the second coordinate is telling me about the corresponding area. Since this point is our vertex, what this means is that when we set our width to be 500 feet, then we get the maximum area of 125,000 square feet. Now, in part B of our problem, we want to find the dimensions that maximize the area of our rectangular region. We have the width, but we also need to know the length of our rectangular region. To determine the length, we can go back to this relationship that we found in the beginning. L, the length, is equal to negative 1 half times W plus 500. So what we can do is substitute in 500 in for the width. So L is equal to negative 1 half times 500 plus 500. This gives us L equals 250. So if we want to maximize the rectangular region, if we're only given 1,000 feet of fencing, we want our length to be 250 feet, and we want our width to be 500 feet. Notice that this time, to maximize the area of our rectangular region, we're not making a square, since our length and width are different. Now, for part C of our problem, the maximum area that we can enclose is 125,000 square feet. So in this video, we learned how to apply what we know about quadratic functions to help us maximize rectangular areas. We saw that by knowing the perimeter of a rectangle, we can express the area as a quadratic function, which we can then maximize by finding the vertex.